I'm Mark Dawson from The Self-Publishing Show, and this is Self-Publishing Spotlight, where we shine a light on the indie authors who are changing the world of publishing one book at a time. Hello, and welcome to The Self-Publishing Spotlight. We meet indie authors at all stages of their careers and ask them a series of five questions. Five questions about their process, their mistakes, and their successes. Five answers that will help you level up your own author career. My name's Tom Ashford, and I'm part of The Self-Publishing Formula. Don't forget that you can get your self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. This week's guest is Kevin Potter. He's written seven books in the fantasy genre and he lives in Oklahoma. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, Would you like to start by maybe talking about the uh, the different sort of subgenres of fantasy that you write in? Um, Yeah, so my work, it sort of treads the line between heroic fantasy, dark fantasy, and epic fantasy. Um, I, I do a lot of you know, in-depth world building sort of stuff, which is you know where the, the epic side of that comes in. Um, but I tend to write darker worlds with a little bit more grittier content, um, you know, which, I, I don't know, heroic might be a bit of an exaggeration because it's not like the Conan heroic fantasy kind of stuff. Right. Um, but that's, that's sort of how I think of it. Nice. Okay, well, if we dive into the questions, question number one is why do you write? Oh, because I can't not write is the best answer to that. Yeah. Um, I've I've been writing since I was, I guess I was nine. Um, started with a school assignment that I wrote about seven times what they wanted me to write. And from there, I just sort of fell in love with it and couldn't stop. Was there a particular reason that you uh, drifted towards, um, you know, publishing as an, as an adult? Um, it's something that had been on my mind since I was I don't know 12 or 13 and at that time it literally everybody I talked to was like no you can't make money doing that there's no way that can be a career you need to find something else um and you know being the impressionable teenager that I was I sort of put it on the back burner for a while um but then around 2010 some things happened in my life things kind of went down the drain and I finally came back to this point where you know writing is what I love this is what I want to do so it's it's time to start doing something and try and make this happen yeah and was there a particular reason that you chose fantasy or was that just your favorite uh, genre to read um it's it's mostly a matter of favorite uh I was introduced to epic fantasy when I was 13 and for a long time the one series I was introduced to was all I would read um, and then eventually I opened up to other things, but it's still mostly fantasy. I venture off a little bit, but not much. Yeah. And are you um, entirely indie or are you, have you had a traditional contract or a hybrid or, or whatever? There was a, a period of maybe a month or two where I actually wanted to go traditional. Um, but then I, purely by chance, I encountered I think it was a a spot on the news or something about this this indie published author and from there the light bulb just kind of went off on my head and it's like hey this is something i can do and then the more i looked into it the more i really prefer the the indie method over the traditional method yeah do you remember who the um the indie author was i, I don't uh, i was hoping it might be mark <laughs> <laughs> um no no i was I was introduced to Mark shortly after I made that decision, but not before that. Yeah. Okay. Well, question number two is how do you write? So do you tend to plot your stories out or just sort of pants them? Uh, I would call myself a planter. Right. Um, I, I, I do a tiny bit of plotting always just in my head. I never actually write anything down, so I don't outline or anything like that. Um, but when I sit down and, come up with a a general story premise that I want to go with. I I almost always have at least an idea of how it's going to end. That often changes, but I I have something. And then I usually have at least two or three plot points throughout the book that it's like, I want this to happen and I want this to happen. And other than that, it's just a a solid idea of who my character is and where they're at in life and just run with it. Yeah. And is there a particular um, like set of software that you use? Um, I actually do my, my first drafts I write by hand, uh, and then I go into Scrivener from there, do my first sort of content edit, uh, and then I transfer into Word for the rest of my editing. 
Okay. And do you use um, what do you use for formatting? Uh, I actually do the majority of my formatting just from Word and then over into an app called Calibre. Yep, cool. And is there a particular uh, time and place that you prefer writing? Um, well, I used to have an office in the upstairs of my house, and that was where I would do most of it. Uh, we've since moved and had to downsize, so I don't have that anymore. Um, so these days, it's usually in my living room, unfortunately. Fair. Um, well, that kind of leads into question number three, which is, are you a full-time author? If you are, how did you get there? And if you aren't, what steps are you taking to make it happen? Uh, I'm not a full-time author. Uh, I wish I was. Um, at this point, um, I mean, I've kind of gotten my head around the, the advertising bit. I proved with my last release that I can, I can do the ads and I can make it work at a, a reasonable return. Um, at this point, it's just a matter of getting my life squared away so that I have the means to do that advertising and, and right. get things to where I want to be. Yeah. And uh, are your books, um, are they like all in a series or, or are they sort of more standalone? Uh, it's definitely series. I, I've got two separate series that actually sort of meet in the middle. Um, chronologically, it doesn't make a lot of sense yet because I haven't gotten to the ending of the first one yet. Um, but they, they do all lead one into the other. Okay. Okay. Well, question number four is uh, what mistakes do you think you've made and what have you got right? Oh, um, I've probably made every mistake under the sun, honestly. Um, I, I started out being very precious about my writing. I wasn't really willing to give anything away. So my mailing list suffered for that. Um, you know, I tried to just do a sample of the, the very first novella I wrote um, when I first started my mailing list. And while that produced generally more engaged subscribers than the freebie does, um, it didn't get very many of them. Right. Um, and, you know, then I had this period where, you know, I didn't really want to advertise because I just felt kind of sleazy doing it. And, you know, I've, I've gone through various phases where I'm just doing the complete wrong thing just because I have this idea in my head that that's how it should be. Um, and it's taken me, gosh, about three years now, actually, um, to sort of get my head around all this and, and figure out that, you know, that's, that's not the, the best approach. Um, mm -hmm. I think primarily in what I've done right is probably with the, the writing itself. Um, so I, you know, I see a lot of authors that, that make the mistake of, you know, skimping on the editing or skimping on the cover. Um, it's, it's something that I've always determined from the very beginning. I want to put out the best quality product that I can. You know, so from the very beginning, even when I had to scrounge pennies at a time, I always made sure I had the, the best possible cover art I could get on my books. I got the best possible editor I could afford to make sure that I'm really just putting out the best product. Yeah. Okay. And um, question number five is, what's your final piece of advice for authors starting out in indie publishing? I think my number one piece of advice is do your research, make sure you know what you're getting yourself into, and be prepared for setbacks. Yeah, because they will come. <laughs> oh, yes. No matter who you are, they will come. Oh, yeah. Well, those are your five questions, but um, some of our listeners may uh, recognize your name from the SPF Facebook group because you, uh, I think each week you put up, uh, was it a brag of the week? Yes. Yes. How did that come about? Um, I It actually was started by someone else. Um, it was Scott Nelson who started that. And I was a participant in that for a good long while. Um, then he came to a point where he had to make some sacrifices to his schedule and he just to in order to have writing time he had to to cut that off um, and he was looking for somebody to take that over um, there were there was a little bit of 
vague interest from a couple of other people. Um, but you know, at the time I decided, you know, I've, I've got a little bit of, of time in my schedule. I can devote to this every week. So let's, let's take this over. I want it to continue. You know, it's, it's something that I feel is really beneficial to the, the community as a whole. You know, it's very uplifting to be able to read through that and see, you know, this awesome stuff that people are able to, to get done every week. And, and I didn't want that to, to disappear. Yeah. Well, it's, it's much appreciated. <laughs> Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming on and for answering the questions. Not a problem. I was happy to be here. That's it for this week's self-publishing spotlight. Don't forget that you can get your free self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. And if you want to appear as a guest on this show, send us brief details about yourself and your writing at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash spotlight dash guest. I'm Tom Ashford, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.